What's up, guys, and welcome back to another Scourge of War videos for Les Jours. So, originally, I was planning to do the full battles for the Lusafel battle, uh, the full battle scenarios for uh, that battle uh, for this video. Um, but I hadn't played Scourge of War in a while, so I always, just before I do, I go and go look on the Norbsoft forums just to check for any Grog toolbar updates or anything like that. And um, they actually, Mitra and his merry band of modders actually released a new version of the Lace and Jor mod itself. So uh, they released the 1.1 revision and I haven't had a chance to really look through it. Uh, they added a whole bunch of stuff like um, a, a new tutorial scenario, um, uh, some imp uh, improved maps, or maps without blown bridges and so forth, um, uh, and, and, and some other things. Um, but they also added a new French divisional scenario that was not in the original version uh, of Les Jours. So we went from having five scenarios to now we have six. So... Um, Obviously, that was the thing I was most excited about when I first saw it. So I just downloaded it and literally just turned on my recording software and played the scenario blind. Um, so uh, I wanted to do this because it's a divisional scenario. So I wanted to get all the smaller stuff out of the way before I go into like the full battle stuff. Uh, so uh, this scenario is called uh, Blooding Morning. Maybe that's supposed to be Bloody Morning. Uh, but it's called Blooding Morning. Uh, it's an hour and a half long. Uh, we command the 16th division of the 5th Corps. So um, that's Albert's division, not uh, Roddenberg's, which was the 15th division, which is mostly what we've been playing uh, in, in Les Ingers. This takes pick. This, this takes place quite a bit later. This is after like the um, engagement along the Safel River, which was I think like ten days after the Battle of Waterloo, so like June twenty eighth or so, twenty eighth, twenty ninth. Um, so this is a couple of weeks later. We're into July now. Um, how long did these French actually hold out after Waterloo? I always thought Waterloo was like the end, but apparently Rap does not know when to quit and he just keeps fun fighting. Um, so it's veteran difficulty. It's considered to be a pretty hard scenario. Um, and the situation is general Strasbourg has been under siege since 29 June. The enemy is in front of you. It is vital that the enemy numbers and the strength of his positions facing you are known. Lead your division in a reconnaissance and force against the enemy's first line. Three cavalry regiments will be attached to your division. Collect the information and inflict the maximum damage. Uh, so we're apparently going to have a cavalry attachment, which is unusual because you normally don't get cavalry uh, unless you're commanding a whole corps. Then you might have some cavalry. But usually cavalry is not attached to a division. Uh, so that's cool. We have some cavalry attached to us, which always helps. Um, and the mission is to occupy the objectives for the necessary time. Um uh, since it's, they use the word plural for objectives, I'm assuming there's more than one. Uh, and let's take a look at the forces available to us. So uh, we command the 15th, uh, sorry, the 16th Division, uh, commanded by Lieutenant General Baron Joseph Jean Baptiste Albert. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce that entirely right, but it is hardly my worst French uh, pronunciation. I'm sure I've done way worse. Um, and it says consisting of Brigade Goudin and Freon. This is wrong. Goudin and Freon are actually part of Rottenberg's division, the 15th division. Um, uh, the actual brigades under our command are uh, Cardinal and uh, Beermen are our two infantry brigades. We also have Gravel's Cavalry Brigade, which is the cavalry that's attached to us, as well as a, a one heavy eight-gun battery, as well as a six-gun horse battery. Um, so a pretty well-rounded force we have at our command. Uh, and we need 2,500 points for a major victory. Uh, and that is all I knew heading into this scenario. I played this completely blind. I was just excited that we had a new scenario and I just wanted to uh, jump right in. I just turned on my recording software and we were off to the races. So a brand new scenario for Lace and Juros, guys. I'm excited to try this scenario out. Um, uh, you know, something brand new always gets me excited.
All right, here we go. So here is our divisional commander, and here comes our courier. And it says, General Albert, our previous reconnaissance in force confirmed that new enemy troops arrived five days ago, and the Austrians are fortifying the three towns of Hausbergen. We need to confirm the strength of enemies facing us and destroy their field works. Take your division and the cavalry, scatter the enemy cavalry outposts, and clear Ober and Middle Hausbergen from the enemy. And that is from Rap. General Rapp, uh, the commander of the Army du Rhine. So it is the crack of dawn here, 4 a.m. Everybody is just getting out of bed. Uh, it is pitch black out. We can't see our nose in front of us. Uh, here's our infantry. And I think our cavalry is in front of us. So here's our two objectives, right? We got two, one at Obershausbergen and one at Middlehausbergen. So I don't really know. I don't have a game plan. I just, here's us, here's them. So I'm going to just grab the whole division and mass and kind of head for this crossroads right here, set up in a formation and then see how, what's in front of us, see how we can advance on the town and just kind of wing it and make up a plan as I go along. I've been playing this game for a long time. I know the ins and outs of the mechanics of how the game works. So I'm confident I can just move up kind of halfway here, see what's in front of us and then make a swing a plan as I go along here. And uh, so that's pretty much what we're doing. I just grabbed the whole division. I took everybody off of take charge, placed them all on hold, uh, grabbed the whole division and just placed them kind of right at that crossroads there in line artillery front, which is a pretty good standard divisional formation. Now the facing's a little off because all I did was point and click. So I'm gonna adjust the facing a couple of turns to the right. And that's a little better. I would go maybe one more turn to the right, and uh, just to get our facing kind of facing kind of right towards those two towns there. And there we go. That looks perfect. And we will TC all the officers so they carry out my orders uh, perfectly. And uh, we will just start heading on down the road here with our. Uh, about, what, 70, 700 man division, pretty big division. Good size, well-rounded force. We have infantry, we have a good cavalry force. We have a, a, a foot, a line battery, a heavy battery, and a horse battery. So uh, a good mix of forces, and the more types of forces we have, the better I am able to really implement those um, combined arms mechanics in our, in our favor that I've demonstrated in previous videos. So uh, yeah, I, play, I played this, uh, obviously I'm recording it, the commentary after the fact, so you know, uh, now I know what's happened, but when I recorded the video I would played it completely blind, I had no idea, uh, I, I don't know anything about this engagement, I'd never heard of it before. Um, so uh, I'm just kind of doing what the uh, orders tell me to do here uh, and heading for those objectives and uh, I'm going to try and capture them. So uh, our men are all converging on the road here and then they will begin uh, marching down it. We see uh, here's our, I think our heavy battery. This looks like our line battery over here. Yeah, this is our, uh, our heavy battery. And then uh, on the right there, I think I saw our horse battery. Here comes our cavalry. They are moving backwards because all the troops will converge on the road at one point and then begin marching down the road. That's just the way the pathing in this game works. So the cavalry is coming back. They'll come on the road and then they'll start marching down the road. All right, so uh, here we go with our playthrough of Bloody Morning. And uh, we will soon see what the day has in store for us here. Uh, so it looks like it has, uh, we have uh, at least a, a fair amount to march uh, to cover some ground and some operational movement here. I'm taking just the most direct path I can uh, to get to the, uh, the two objectives. Uh, the scenario is an hour and a half long. Um, so. It's not super long where I want to just dilly-dally and take my time and make everything perfect, but I think it's long enough that, uh, uh, you know, we certainly should be able to cover the ground necessary, and uh, if we can execute a, a good attack, uh, hopefully be able to take these objectives when we see what they are. 
I don't even know what they are at this point. Uh, so I'm just uh, pretty much going by the courier message and the situation report, and uh, we're heading out, ready to ready to fight. This general rap sure doesn't know when uh, when a lost cause is a lost cause because we're about uh, at least three weeks now after the Battle of Waterloo. And he keeps right on a fighting. Uh, so I just want to give another shout out to uh, Mitra and his group of modders, Biondo and, and Gunship, uh, at uh, uh, on the Norbsoft forums. Um, they continue to support this game and put out new content and and keep the game new and interesting and, and, and add more stuff to it. Um, it. You know, without the Lace and Jorth mod, I probably would have stopped playing this game a long time ago um, and, and, and really had nothing to come back to. And they keep they keep doing new stuff, and I think that's really awesome. I really admire your guys' dedication to keeping the game alive and, and, and keeping new content coming. Um, and I, I've heard that they actually can plan to continue uh, doing maybe more mods in the future, um, which I, I would be thrilled. I mean, I'd be happy no matter what you guys did. Uh, uh, there's so many, like, cool things I would love to see. Uh, you could do something from the, the peninsula, you know, or, or 1805 or 1809 or even during the Russian campaign. Um, uh, or, you know, what would be a cool scenario is, um, or a cool series mod to do with a series of battles would be like um, Napoleon's uh, escape over that bridge on the retreat from Russia where they almost cornered him, they almost had him, they thought they had him in like the perfect trap and he like snuck off to the north and like built a bridge and got his, what was left of his army across. Uh, it, it was a pretty brilliant maneuver um, and probably saved what was left of his army. Uh, that would be a cool one to do, or um, or Marengo. I would love to see Marengo. That's a smaller battle, kind of like the Le Saint Georges, um, but it's one of his Napoleon's more famous smaller battles. It was in the earlier part of his career, um, and it was a, a really um, exciting battle because uh, it was touch and go there. The, the for a while, the French were really in danger of losing that battle, uh, and they kind of got saved. Um, kind of in the nick of time um, by Desai's arrival. So that would be an exciting one to do. But I mean, you know, whatever, Mitra, whatever you guys decide to do, you know, I'm, I'm going to love it. So, uh, you know, I'm just kind of rambling on about all the possibilities there could be. But I mean, just the Lace Head Chores mod and having all this new content, I still have the full battles to go through, has just been uh, awesome that you guys keep putting new stuff out. So, uh, Bravo to uh, you guys for keeping this thing going five years later, almost five years later. Uh, so, uh, all right, we are continuing to move down the road here. Our cavalry has uh, now made it onto the road, and uh, you can see our troops all uh, marching down uh, the road. Uh, they, the Grog Toolbar defaults to column by division, even on road movement. They don't march and march in columns. The Grog Toolbar always uses column by division. Uh, uh, for movement, unless you use like line hold form or something where they'll move in line. But other than that, they always move in column by division. And um, uh, that solved a lot more problems than it ever created. Uh, yeah, they're not marching in column by division, uh, marching column here, they're marching in column by division. But that's a small thing compared to the problems it solved with uh, line units crisscrossing each other and getting all tangled up and, and just making a mess of everything. You can now use mass movement orders like this, and it looks cohesive. You know, uh, here I am uh, using the follow command uh, for the camera, which I'm not going to stick to because I'm stuck behind a flag, and that doesn't offer much of a view. So, uh, but uh, you can see I just grabbed this entire div division and just said, "Go here," and they're all moving in a rather cohesive way down the road, and. Um, you know, the Grog toolbar with its multitude of different levels of 
take command and uh, remove the take command, um, uh, as well as its myriad of formation selections and just the ease of use is, is uh, really what makes moving these mass formations uh, possible so easily uh, and then being able to instantly grab different sub uh, organizations like brigades or, and be able to just instantly take charge of them and, and, and have them uh, uh, do what you want them to do you know that's why it's just the grog toolbar is just the best so yeah I really don't care that they're not marching in you know like the four by four, the four uh, uh, line marching column this you know this is fine by me for all the other benefits that the grog toolbar gives me which is why I always rave about how good it is. So uh, we can see it's starting to lighten up here. Uh, it is in the middle of July, so it is summer. So dawn comes rather early. Here comes our uh, our brightly colored cavalry here in their green and magenta outfits here. Uh, these look like dragoons. So we have a few regiments of a few squadrons of dragoons here, with some artillery uh, bringing up the rear. And it uh, looks like um, this is a uh, different type of cavalry here. Uh, so there's Gravel, the commander, and it uh, looks like we have some chasseurs. So we have some chasseurs and some dragoons. And uh, we can see in the distance there, there's our position that we marked off where we're going to be. And oh my, look at this. We have a pair of Austrian cavalry squadrons. Some Austrian cavalry reconnaissance. Quite a ways away from those two objectives. So uh, who knows what's in front of us at this point. There could be a sizable force uh, in front of us. Uh, now... These two squadrons look like they are withdrawing away from our approach, as they should. They are only two squadrons, and they're being approached by a rather large column of uh, uh, French. So uh, they're doing the right thing. They've taken notice of our approach, and they are moving off. So um, with only two squadrons of uh, cavalry, I am not going to modify anything I'm doing quite yet. I want to see uh, what happens as the situation develops. There's no need to panic. Or uh, We have three squadrons now. So as we, as we move closer to the position, our visibility becomes better because our units are moving closer. So there may, in fact, be more than three squadrons here, but we just can only see three at the moment. So I'm taking note of them as they approach. Uh, again, they all appear to be moving off to the north, kind of away from us. So I'm going to continue our advance here. Uh, I have a whole French division, three squadrons, it's nothing for me to worry about right now. Let's see where this leads. And you can see our rather long line is uh, finishing uh, trailing off here as we leave the town. And uh, our lead unit is uh, approaching its position. It's still got a little ways to go, which will give this Austrian cavalry more time to move off, which I'm fine with. They want no part of us, and right now I see no reason to try and engage them. So as our visibility opens up here, as our lead unit gets closer, I'm just kind of scouring the area to see if I can see anything else as it becomes visible. Our lead unit is approaching. So, so far I see three squadrons of Austrian cavalry uh, who are moving off to the north here. And uh, I still have my division set to form line with artillery in the front when they get here. Uh, if necessary, I will modify that as more stuff becomes visible to me. Um, as I get a better idea of what this cavalry force in front of us looks like. 
uh, where they're heading, what they're doing. If those kind of things make themselves known, I may modify my deployment. But uh, at this point, it's still very early. I'm still just on the approach, keeping my options open. You know, there's no reason to modify anything I'm doing right now. They're just three little enemy Austrian cavalry squadrons. They are no threat to a whole French column like this. Uh, you can see my cavalry has actually deployed into line uh, because they've no doubt taken notice of the Austrian cavalry. Uh, cavalry tends to fight other cavalry in line because it brings the most sabers to bear uh, at the same time, whereas they tend to hit infantry in column by division uh, for the depth of the striking power. So since it's cavalry, the lead cavalry units here are forming line. But uh, their officers are under TC, so they're not going to move off on their own or anything unless they're ordered to, even though I don't have them on TC. Their, their officers are TC, so uh, they'll just keep following my, uh, my orders. That's why I TC the officers. And we're just uh, letting our troops uh, make their way down the road here. And uh, as it gets brighter, as it, you know, day daytime comes, we'll start to be able to see uh, more of the area around us and <clears throat> really start to plan out what it is we're going to do. So I see another Austrian squadron further uh, west who are also moving off to the north here. And now I'm see thinking that the... Um, the cavalry is pulling out to the north and that seems to be they're all moving that way like the whatever brigade they're part of is like forming a formation at a position further north uh so i need to head west so i'm actually going to i'm thinking bring my lead brigade further over to the left away from the cavalry uh, and form them up and then if they continue to move north like they are maybe what i'll do is take my cavalry and 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 kind of form a screen uh facing north and screen the advance of my infantry and my artillery as they head west to those two towns so i haven't finalized that that's just kind of i'm saying to myself if this keeps happening this is what i'll do You know, in a situation like this where I don't know the scenario, I don't know how it's going to unfold, I try and stay as flexible as I can at the beginning uh, to give myself the most options and, um, you know, not really commit to anything until I'm sure what I'm thinking is actually what's happening. Because all I really see is a couple of squadrons right now. That doesn't give me a full picture of what's going on, but just my experience with the game, my history with the game, I've seen enough enemy units moving to safely assume that those units are probably all part of the same brigade and they're complying with a formation order. So they're all moving to a, a, a specific location where they're going to assume a formation. And I don't know that for sure, but that's what I'm assuming right now. They're all kind of heading off in this direction. Uh, and so um, just my experience and my instincts tell me that's what's happening. Uh, so I may take my cavalry, if they continue to do that, I may take my cavalry and kind of set up a screen facing them uh, to screen my infantry's advance down these roads towards the two objectives. So as the situation develops here, we'll see if that is indeed what's happening. Now, I'm continuing to s kind of scour the area to see if I can pick up any other enemy troops, because just because all I can see is some enemy cavalry, that doesn't mean that's all that's out here. So I have to keep looking around, especially while it's still dawn like this and the visibility isn't that great. So tentatively, I'm moving um, our lead brigade, which I believe is Cardinot's brigade, uh, and I'm moving him off to the left. And uh, starting to get brighter now. I'm starting to see more of the area. I can see some. I can kind of see the outlines of the buildings of the towns. Uh, 
some of the spires and stuff off, off way off in the horizon. And uh, this Austrian cavalry is continuing to move northward. Uh, they're not interfering with my deployment at all. Uh, my guns are now up front. And um, I'm going to now assume that I'm right, that they're converging on a formation, that their brigade commander has ordered them to form at that location. And I'm going to bring my cavalry up in line formation and set up basically a screen so that my infantry can continue moving westwards behind my cavalry and my cavalry will basically act as a block between my troops and the Austrian cavalry. Now that'll all take a little while to develop. My cavalry right now is just strung out down the road. Uh, we still have to form up Cardinot's brigade. We still have to bring up Beerman's brigade, bring up the rest of our artillery, bring up the horse battery and set them up with our cavalry. So we still got a lot to do before uh, this even starts to take effect. Uh, however, I am going to begin uh, moving my infantry and my line artillery, my heavy guns forward, or at least setting the destinations for them forward uh, to begin kind of moving towards those towns. I still don't see anything in front of me. Um, I don't want to waste too much time. It's taken us almost 20 minutes just to get here. The scenario is only an hour and a half long. So I, you know, I don't want to wait for my whole division to deploy and then start moving them forward. As units start to enter that crossroads area, I will start feeding the formation forward. Uh, and I'll do it, instead of doing it with the whole division, I'll do it by the brigade and by the battery and uh, use brigade formations and, and artillery formations rather than just a stock divisional formation. So here's Beerman. He's our second brigade. He's uh, got about 3,000 men. We'll send him down the road on the right behind the cavalry screen that hasn't even formed yet. But uh, as long as that Austrian cavalry keeps moving to the north, and we can actually see the objective icon. So we know we are heading in exactly the right direction because there it is right in front of us, off on the horizon there. And uh, here comes Beerman's brigade. Here comes some of our cavalry. I know there's probably still some more trailing behind us. But... Uh, as this develops, a plan is slowly starting to take shape here of what it is I want to do. Uh, and that is basically to screen the Austrian cavalry with my own cavalry while my infantry and artillery advance down the roads towards the town. Uh, this all presupposes that I'm looking at all the Austrian cavalry here and hopefully there's not more Austrian cavalry uh, by the towns. Um, let's hope. <laughs> So, okay, we can see now that they are indeed forming a formation here. Uh, so it looks like they're, they're setting up in line, kind of, um, kind of facing the southeast. They're up north. So we should be able to kind of set our cavalry up along this road facing them as a screen to block them uh, from interfering with our infantry and our artillery's advance on those two towns. So that's basically what I uh, have decided to do at this particular moment. And we can see our the rest of our heavy guns are lagging behind, uh, as well as about half our cavalry. But we've got enough uh, cavalry and artillery up here to start getting the screen set up. And there's Cardinot, and his brigade is approaching and getting into position. We put the guns in here, and then Beerman's brigade is on the right in here somewhere. So kind of a line right in here we're setting up. And then once we kind of get that all set up, then we can start kind of pushing forward in a battle formation. You know, so we can be ready to uh, encounter whatever it is that is in front of us. So uh, this looks like it's our horse battery here. That's good. We'll be able to get them set up pretty quick and uh, maybe start bombarding the Austrian cavalry position a little bit, maybe get some points.
Now, our heavy guns are kind of lagging behind. We only got three guns coming up here, so we're not going to wait for the whole battery because that would just take forever because Cardano is almost formed up. Beerman is right here, so they're not going to be too long. Uh, and, um, you know, we want to start moving forward and seeing what's in front of us. Our guns will come up in time. Uh, once we get up there and if we start seeing enemy forces, we'll need to decide and come up with a plan anyway, so... Um, you know, we'll have some time to let our guns catch up. So uh, here is uh, Claw Captain Claude, our Favier Claude, our uh, horse battery commander. We're just gonna bring him up so he can. Uh, his battery is almost fully in position, and uh, it's bright enough now that we can start seeing uh, what's in front of us. And yeah. The Austrians are just lining up in line here, so it's a good-sized cavalry force. I don't think it's as big as ours. It looks like they have five or six squadrons. We have three whole regiments, so we probably have around nine squadrons total. So uh, our cavalry force should be able to keep them from interfering with our, uh, our infantry and our artillery. And uh, I'm going to grab the commanders here and just double-click them and get them up to the front. You can see our our first two guns have unlimbered. And uh, they are taking shots at the Austrian cavalry out there. And oh, they scored a hit already. Nice. So our, our rightmost gun actually uh, dropped an Austrian cavalryman already. Way to go. And uh, our battery commander is coming over to uh, assume command of his battery, which got a little bit ahead of him. So Cardano is all set up. The three guns we have of our heavy artillery is uh, in position. As soon as Beerman is done setting up, I think we'll start pushing forward. And uh, most of his battalions are, are pretty close by here. We're just waiting for them to finish forming up, and then we'll, uh, we'll begin pushing forward towards the objectives. Uh, so far, no resistance, really, no opposition. The uh, Austrian cavalry uh, uh, moved off to the north and settled uh, in line away from us. And uh, I'm happy to have them sit there for now. With our, if we set up our little cavalry screen right here, we, our infantry should be able to just slip right by them. We got about five squadrons up in position now, uh, about an equal size uh, as the Austrian force, uh, but we have, you know, about another four squadrons coming up, so uh, I think we outnumber them pretty well. I don't see any Austrian horse artillery either. It looks like just cavalry out there. We have the guns. So we'll continue to just uh, let our guns rip and maybe we'll rack up some points. So there's the last of Cardinot's battalions. Uh, Beerman is just about done getting into position here. And again, we can see one of the objective markers out there ahead of us. The other one should be out here somewhere. There it is. So now we have a good line on both our objectives. We are facing in generally the right direction here. So we can scroll forward on the map now and see, okay, here's our objectives. So they both look like they're fortified buildings. Yes. Okay, so we're not close enough to see any enemy troops, but we can see that those are objectives are 
uh, garrison buildings. They are most likely garrisoned with troops. Uh, we don't know what's out in front, what the reinforcement situation is like, because we're not close enough to see yet. So uh, I'm going to begin pushing my brigades, my artillery forward, and uh, just inching forward and seeing what's in front of us as uh, the daylight continues to increase and our visibility gets better as we approach. So we'll bring, we'll bring Beerman up on the right. And there he goes. And uh, we'll bring the battery up, too. We've got three guns. It's not the whole battery. The rest of them are lagging behind. But uh, at the very least, we'll be assigning a destination for the whole battery. And I think I'll put them kind of right out in this field here. Obviously, if there's enemies here my artillery will be turned around so I don't worry about placing them too close because if it's uh, if they encounter the enemy they will turn around and I'll halt my infantry and we'll have a little action right out there so we can now see I think that's the entirety of the Austrian cavalry brigade uh, looks like they got about eight squadrons so yeah they're, they're, they're about equal in size to us But uh, as long as they uh, sit out there in line, I'm actually just happy to let them sit out there as they are not a consequential target. Uh, I'm much more interested in these objectives. And uh, we'll bring our division commander, uh, General Albert, up. And our guns have gotten 13 points so far. That's good. Uh, since those guns are the only ones firing right now, I'm just going to send the supply wagon over there. Uh, it's not canister fire, so you don't need to be as diligent with um, uh, resupplying the artillery as you have sometimes seen me seen when I'm using artillery at very close range. Uh, they carry a lot more shell. But um, being that I'm sending my heavy battery this way, where I expect the main action to be, uh, once uh, those guns are engaged, I will probably commandeer the supply wagon and send them to uh, the, the heavy battery. Uh, so we will just top off the horse battery before we leave so that they have enough ammo to keep bombarding uh, the Austrians' cavalry out there. So, uh, all right, we're just about set here with our cavalry screen. Our other two battalions look like they're going to be extending the line to the west, which is good. Kind of overlaps the Austrian position so they can't get by us. But they are just sitting out there. Just sitting. And I'm happy to let that continue. And uh, our guns have racked up a couple of points. Nothing big, but, you know... Over time, over time, they'll start to accrue more points. So, all right, I see an Austrian column. I see another Austrian column. I see these two forts are garrisoned. I see a third Austrian column. All right. There's another one. Four Austrian columns. All right. So, what we... Right now, I'm taking note of the situation, and I'm starting to think about what I want to do. As my troops approach here. So, it looks like we have four Austrian columns deployed across a pretty wide front, and the strong point are these garrisoned buildings. So, as I approach here, I'm thinking... What's dawning on me right now 
uh, is that these forces are actually very spread out, and maybe that is to my advantage. So what I'm thinking is, if I can assign one battalion from each brigade, detach them, and send one out each on the far right, one out on the far left, and just pin these two outermost units in place and keep them engaged, I can take the rest of my brigades and hit these two central battalions, knock them out of the way, and then surround both of these buildings on, on three sides and shoot the defenders out. Uh, uh, and, and, and if I can surround those on all three sides, I can get them out of there pretty quickly. So that's the first thing that's dawning on me right now, is that these forces are very spread out. They're not in supporting distance of each other. If I can send a battalion out and engage these guys, keep them pinned in engaged distance, and do the same thing here, then I can take the rest of these two brigades and just hammer smash these two central battalions, route them, get them out of there, which leaves me free to deal with these two fortified buildings. So that's the first thing I'm thinking. So I'm going to begin by inching my brigades further forward. I'm not going to come and engage distance yet, but just start bringing them further forward because I still may not be getting the whole picture. That's what I can see. I need to move a little further forward. Daylight's still increasing. Our visibility will get better as we get closer, and it will tell me whether this plan I'm thinking about is really viable or not. As I said, I'm kind of making this up as I go along because this is the first time I ever played this scenario, first time I ever looked at it. So uh, I do have a lot of experience playing this game. Um, so I certainly, right away, I have ideas and I just need to not get ahead of myself, get closer and see if my idea of what I'm thinking now is actually viable because these two outermost units here and off the screen way over on the right are way out of supporting distance of these two central units. So if I can send out just a battalion each, deploy some skirmishers, pin them in place and keep them engaged, I have all the rest of these two brigades to just slam into those two isolated central battalions and just, you know, uh, bulldoze them out of there. And then I'm free to to surround the forts and shoot the defenders out. So that's my plan right now. And uh, as we get closer, we'll see how viable that is. And I'm just going to do a quick supply wagon run while I can, while my forces are still positioning themselves. Just keep the, ca the caissons as topped off as possible. Gained a couple of more points, dropped a few more Austrian cavalrymen. We're at 19 points now. The rest of my cavalry has now uh, arrived, and uh, our screen is complete. Our infantry has successfully made it past the Austrian cavalry without a hitch. And uh, now it's time to decide how we're going to crack this Austrian nut open here. So I do not see any Austrian artillery. So we're bringing our guns up. So right away we have an artillery advantage. And uh, we're placing them right in the center here where they can hopefully stop them softening up these central units. Now these units are not reacting because we have not come close enough yet. We are still more than 500 yards away. Uh, so uh, we are not in engaged distance. They're probably set on defend or hold. So we'd have to come a lot closer to get them to react. So I am now doing what I said. I, am, I have detached, you can see down here, minus one battalion uh, from Cardinal's brigade and I'm sending them off with the goal of pinning that unit in place. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the rightmost battalion of Beerman's Brigade. Detach them. Well, I'm gonna take command of everybody first, so all my units now are on TC. And I will detach them so that they no longer follow brigade level orders. They'll, I have to just move them manually. And I'm going to send them off to the right to pin this unit in place. So once this unit is engaged, they'll no longer be able to help out either the fort or these other two units that are really uh, the focus of my attack, what I really want to do. So this is a little bit of um, divide and conquer. I'm pinning these units in place, not with the goal of defeating them, 
but keeping them from helping out these other two battalions while I hit them with an overwhelming force so that they're no threat at all. I don't really care what happens over here as far as winning or losing. I just want to pin these two units in place. And that's kind of the whole idea. So a little bit of, a little bit of divide and conquer going on here. And I kind of got this philosophy of the attack uh, from uh, um, uh, really from like uh, Stonewall Jackson from the American Civil War. Um, in 1862, he led a campaign with a relatively small force in the Shenandoah Valley where he took on about three federal armies, each of them bigger than his own force. And he managed to defeat all three of them a whole bunch of times on separate occasions because he never faced them all at once. His troops moved so quickly compared to the federal armies that he was able to attack smaller portions of each of these armies uh, with his own force so that he was always attacking with superior numbers. Um, and I kind of follow that same philosophy on the attack uh, to hit smaller forces with overwhelming power um, and if I have to, just use smaller forces to pin other forces in place and just keep them engaged while I uh, accomplish what I'm really setting out to accomplish here, which is to attack right up the center with both of these brigades and all that's facing me are these two battalions. If I can get rid of those quickly and I keep these two units here pinned in engagements... There's, it doesn't look like there's anything else defending these fortified garrison buildings except the defenders inside. I'll surround them on all three sides, shoot them out of there, and I can get possession of them. So uh, that is the plan here. And so far, uh, I'm going with it because I don't see anything else out here to dissuade me from that course of action. So at this point now, I'm kind of committing to that. I'm saying this is, this is the way to attack this position. So, uh, as always, I'm going to kick out some skirmishers uh, and put them in these hedgerows. They'll give me a little bit of a defensive terrain bonus. Skirmishers themselves are very good against line units. Once I come within engaged distance of this unit, they will trigger into line and begin uh, engaging my skirmishers, thus being pinned in place. So a certain amount of attack philosophy going on here, as well as just knowledge of how the game mechanics work. Uh, I know how to trigger these units and, and, into uh, becoming stuck in engagements. Uh, so this unit will now basically form line because I've moved within engaged distance of them. And now they're just going to stand there and, and engage me, uh, which is exactly what I want them to do. So uh, we will now do the same thing over here. We will kick out some skirmisher units and send them forward to trigger this unit in, into forming line and engaging them. While our main force of these two basically still full strength brigades, minus one battalion each, uh, get to hit these uh, two Austrian battalions kind of head on in a real, real big advantage numbers wise, a real lopsided advantage. And that's kind of the plan here. So we've triggered line. They're now forming to engage. This unit has now formed line and is shooting at our skirmishers, however. Uh, we are kind of at max musket range here, about uh, 120 yards. Uh, we're a little outside musket range here, so we got to inch these guys this way a little bit to get them closer. So they actually engage, because musket range is 150 yards. We're 156 yards away right now. So we just got to move them a little further to the right, and we'll trigger engage. But not much is probably going to come of this, because my skirmishers are very well protected, and they're at max musket range. So smoothbore muskets at 150 yards are good luck hitting anything. You know, <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a Charlottesville musket. Uh, I've shot it at 150 yards. You'd be lucky to hit not just the barn door, but the barn itself. Uh, so I'm not expecting much to come of that engagement, and I don't care. All I care about is that unit is now pinned in place and stuck engaging my skirmishers. Here, on the other hand, I've gotten a little too close. 
Uh, we're only 80 yards away from them. Muskets are much more effective at 80 yards. And this is a big line unit. They're throwing out a lot of lead and they're dropping some of my skirmishers. So I have to fall back a little bit. Uh, I deployed these skirmishers a little too close. So we'll fix that up. No problem. We'll recall these guys and if necessary and, and kick out a fresher skirmish unit. These guys are taking some losses. You know, as long as we keep that unit pinned in place. So our artillery is up. They scored 23 points already. The whole battery's up now. They're softening up those central Austrian columns. The Austrian cavalry is just sitting pretty out there. Uh, we will now commandeer the uh, supply wagon. We've topped off the, uh, cav the horse battery, and we will uh, send these guys over now to where I believe the main action will be. And we will... Uh, Keep our, our uh, line, uh, our heavy guns in uh, in ammo. So yeah, no hits yet, no nothing, not much uh, to be accomplished at this distance. But we're keeping them engaged, and that's all that matters. So uh, yeah, this skirmish unit is really getting mollywopped. Uh, they deployed too close to that Austrian unit. Uh, this one's doing okay. Uh, they're not really the prime focus, so we might recall this skirmisher unit and just send out uh, a fresh one, a uh, full hundred-man group, um, and just not not deploy them 80 yards away. Uh, you know, deploy them more like 100 yards away, so that they don't they don't catch the full broadside, as it were. So uh, here we go, new skirmisher unit, hundred man, and yeah, we'll just keep them right here. You know, 120 yards away, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we're about 117 yards away. That's better. That's, yeah. We're not going to get molly whopped and, um, you know, we'll keep that unit pinned and engaged. Now, it's what I call party time. So we have two really big French brigades here, even without one battalion each. And, uh... We are just going to march forward here and smash into these two Austrian columns. And uh, our, our artillery is doing good work, actually, softening up uh, this leftmost column right here. They're actually being softened up quite a bit. Uh, and uh, we'll take Beerman's brigade and do the same thing. If we can route these two battalions, we can then surround these two forts on three sides, send out skirmishers, shoot the defenders out, get a hold of our objective. And uh, that is the plan. So, uh, all right, things look a little better over here now. Our skirmishes are doing okay. Yeah, these guys are not getting hit anymore at all. They're still at 100 men. So this is better. We're keeping this unit engaged, out of the fight. And uh, we're getting to accomplish what we want to accomplish in the center here. While we pin these two big Austrian battalions on uh, either the extreme right and the extreme left. And uh, we're just shooting blanks here. We're not hitting anything. We're, they're not hitting us. We're too far away, but that's the whole point. Here comes the supply wagon. Austrian cavalry is still sitting pretty out there. I don't... Uh, they're kind of cut off from their forces now. And uh, here we go. Two big French brigades advancing on these two two Austrian columns, and you can see our artillery shells bursting overhead, uh, softening this bat, this uh, column up for the charge here. And I'm sure they won't, st I'm sure they won't stay in column. As soon as we come in and engage distance, they will probably deploy into line. And I'm just walking up to them because I want to save all my fatigue for the charge itself. And uh, we're still doing okay over here. Keeping that unit busy. Ninety-five points for the artillery. So they have really softened. They've shot out a hundred men out of this unit already. Uh, they've really softened this unit up. Uh, so they're taking some losses. And now this whole brigade is just bearing down on them. 
and we're just gonna dump truck them. And they're running. They're on. They're they're done. They're done. Nope. I actually agree with that move. There is no point in standing there in a hopeless, hopeless position and just getting raked over the coals. They got battered by the artillery. A whole French brigade is bearing down on you. Don't be heroes, boys. Live to fight another day. And the thing is, is this unit is probably not routed because they did that. This is probably a retreat. Uh, and uh, had we been able to hit them, I'm sure we would have routed them. So by actually retreating that unit, most likely the AI just preserved that unit uh, for a later time where it might be better used. They're still taking some artillery shots as they depart, some parting gifts, but uh, let's see if we can hit this unit or if they make the same call. So uh, here comes Beerman, 3,000 men. That's a tall, that's a lot of French troops. So they are deploying into line. So, oh boy, this brigade is really close. I don't know if they're even going to be able to get off any shots before this brigade hits them. Here we go, boys. Charge! Okay, so they are shooting. We have taken two losses. Three losses. Four losses, but... Oh, that's it. It's over. Off they go. Now, this unit is broken, it looks like to me. That's... When they retreat like that and don't reform, that means that unit is broken. So, okay, this unit is withdrawing. This unit has withdrawn. We can now start uh, sending units to shoot out this uh, garrisoned house over here. We will surround it on all three sides, shoot them out as fast as we can to occupy this position. And uh, we'll do the same with Cardinot's brigade on the uh, fort garrison building over on the left here. So uh, we're still just kind of standing our ground against these guys, but um, so I don't need this whole brigade now to do this. So I think we can probably take one of these units and uh, and send them to help out these guys on the far left, deploy them on the Austrian flank, shoot them up, get them to pull back, get them out of the battle. And uh, there's some woods here. We can deploy in there, get a defensive terrain bonus, and uh, we'll deploy here and in here and start shooting at the all three sides of this fort. And for the unit that I'm sending to the left, I'm going to march them out so they don't march across the building's front and get fired on. And uh, yeah, this unit here, I guess, or this one of these units here, I'm sending to hit the Austrian flank and help that other unit out. So, all right, this unit has reformed now. And uh, we got two units here we can send against them. Uh, and we're continuing to... Uh, now, it looks like we actually already have shot this unit. This unit was inside this building, I believe, and they have pulled back. Uh, so it looks like this building is empty, though I don't think I took notice of this right away. Because I probably did not expect it to happen so quickly. Uh, they probably just realized that it wasn't a good position, that we had forced all the supporting battalions back, and that's why they withdrew. The, the AI doesn't necessarily pay attention to, whoa, well, no, this is an objective for the other side, I have to hold on to it. If it's a bad position, the AI will just withdraw. So, uh, I, with the Austrian cavalry sitting pretty out here, I am going to start siphoning off a couple of cavalry squadrons and bringing them up here. Uh, just so I have the ability, if I need to, to force enemy units into square, that's how I use cavalry. I don't, I'm not really a big fan of using cavalry uh, for their charge abilities. I mostly like to just force enemy units into square. 
So uh, we now have uh, a, a unit on the flank of this battalion. We'll just move them a little closer, and this battery, sh this battalion should just pull away uh, and relieve some of these guys a little bit. They're already starting to pull back. I can see that there are some of their men are withdrawing. And we're going to advance uh, on this battalion and see if we can't push them back again. Uh, we'll move this battalion and see if we can get on this unit's flank in the hedgerows, shoot them out of there. And then once I realize that this fort is actually empty now, we can wheel that unit to face them. All right, so now if this unit is out here, we can send them over here and get on another side of this fort. We've already got one unit over here. And another unit is moving into position here. We'll have all three of these, uh, all three sides of this fort surrounded, and uh, that should be enough to shoot them out of there. So as I said, we're going to put this unit in the hedgerow on this Austrian unit's flank. Flanking fire is very effective in this game. That should get them to cave immediately. And I now realize the house is empty, but it also, I can see it only holds 300 men. This unit has 467 men. I can't send them in there. It's too big a unit. So I'm just going to split off 300 man skirmisher groups, get them in there uh, so they can occupy the objective. Just we'll split off three of them, 100 men. We can wheel this unit now to face the enemy, because they're not shooting at the fort anymore. And we need one more skirmisher unit. Get them in there. And then we just need to grab Beerman, so we have a leader in there, and uh, we will have the objective occupied for this house right here. And where is Beerman? There he is. Grab him. Get him in there. Double-click him. Leaders don't have fatigue. And uh, you can see on the left there, we have broken that unit. They have pulled back. And uh, we can now deploy into line with this far left unit. And we have all three sides of the fort being shot at. And we will now make the situation even better by deploying skirmishers in front of our line units to screen them. So uh, once that happens, uh, our skirmishers will begin screening some of the fire so that we don't take so many losses. Fortified positions can be tough nuts, nuts to crack because uh, they do offer a defensive ter terrain bonus. It's, uh, yeah, I think it's over a 50% damage reduction. So you kind of have to mitigate some of your own damage by putting some skirmishers out there uh, to absorb some of the damage so that they'll take damage too, but they don't take it to the same degree as the line you. Uh, but this is a game of attrition. We want to just shoot at them until they decide they've had enough of us on all three sides like this. Continuing to pour out the skirmishers here. And uh, hopefully they don't hold out longer because there's a well in there so they have a good supply of water. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. So uh, we're kicking out skirmishers on this side now. Uh, it's a little tighter space because of this building back here so we're going to have to finagle the positioning a little bit. We don't have as much room to work with. I would rather be further back but I can't be because there's houses right here. So I'm just trying to pull back as much as I can. You know, especially the line unit, which is, you know, they're doing all right. But uh, we want to try and minimize our losses as much as possible while bringing skirmishers to bear and seeing if we can get these guys out of here as quickly as possible. That's the whole idea.
and uh, yeah, I'm just working within a tight space here, so uh, you know I have to try to I have to kind of account for units' footprints and and uh, try and spread them out as much as possible and make this work uh, within a tight area here. So it just takes a, a tiny bit of finagling, but we'll get it. So uh, all right, we got skirmishers out everywhere now. We have reduced the number of men inside that fort now that they no longer have enough men to, con uh, to maintain the objective. Uh, so uh, we know we're whittling them down, and sooner or later they will break. All right, we got a big eight-gun artillery battery. There is absolutely no reason for it to be all the way back there now. Let's bring these guns up. Let's start punishing these Austrian battalions. I see no Austrian guns. We're the ones with the cannon. I love cannon. Let's let it rock. So uh, we have indeed made this unit pull back. Uh, they're a big unit. I'm not too interested in really tangling with them. I'm happy they've pulled back really away from the action. They're cut off within their forces. I'm going to recall these skirmishers now and just kind of move these guys off to kind of over here somewhere and just kind of contain these guys. They've pulled back now. They don't want to mess with two French battalions. So as you can see, they no longer have the objective. They're still they they still occupy the fort, so we can't move in. But they don't have enough men in there to occupy it anymore. So we're probably dealing with less than 200 men. So here comes our eight-gun battery. We'll bring the supply wagon and Albert up along with it. Uh, we got ca two cavalry squadrons on the way in case we need them. It's all good. Oh, Ooh, look at this. We got Austrian reserves. Those are different units, right? That's not the units we push back. That looks like a whole regiment. All right, let's not move too much. Let's not move too much further forward and aggro them. Um, we'll just contain what's down here, and uh, we'll try not to aggro them. And just hopefully they sit there. Uh, the only reason they would move forward uh, is if there's actually a battle script for them to do it. So if it's part of the scenario, if it's part of the script, then uh, it has nothing to do with me aggroing them. Uh, they'll just simply start moving on their own. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. But uh, I'm totally comfortable handling what we're dealing with down here. Uh, we'll continue to pour units onto these units' flank and get them to withdraw. Oh, they're moving. Uh, they're moving. See, this is this is a battle script. This is uh, the scenario author has. Oh, here's more. Look at this. So uh, we have to wrap this up quick now because with that looks like a whole Austrian regiment on the approach. We have to get into that fort and wrap that up and be ready to beat them uh, before they get here. So uh, we do have some cavalry coming up. We can probably slow them up and force them into square if we need to. Uh, but I would like to wrap up uh, disengagement on the left fort as quickly as possible. Uh, and we need to start clearing some of these battalions out of here now. So uh, we'll take this battalion here, set them up in line on this unit's flank. That'll get rid of them. Uh, we'll recall these skirmishers at this point. No point in pitter-pattering around over here anymore. Let's form this whole line back up, move up, engage these units, pin them in this facing so this unit can come up and hit them in the flank. No reason to mess around anymore. All right, so uh, one of our units here has really gone and advanced, and that's uh, actually a good thing because we can use them to delay this Austrian advance over here. Maybe we can set them up back here or something, and we take this unit. Once this unit breaks, set something up in here. It looks like three well, three battalions are on the way. All right, they're, they're leaving. They're running. They're out. All right, so these Austrians are getting closer. They're retreating out of the hot fort. So I'm just going to grab every single skirmisher unit here. Instead of recalling them, I'm just going to put them all in the fort, grab everyone, get the leader in there. We'll keep the line units outside uh, of the fort to, de to defend it. And uh, we got to make this quick because these, these Austrian regiments are approaching. So uh, where is our... where? Okay, that is Cardano. Get in here. Get Cardano in here. Assume, assume control of the objective. So, uh, oh, all right. So my plan worked, but I did not anticipate that there were more Austrian forces on the field in 
in reserve that are now coming forward. So quickly now I have to rethink the situation. I have the objectives. Now I need to figure out how I can quickly clear out what's in front of me and be ready to meet these reinforcements that are coming uh, quickly. So uh, we've now moved these guys onto the flank of this battalion. That should get rid of them. We've got a couple of skirmisher units out here. I'll pull this one back into the woods. I'll turn this one so they're facing the rear. See if we can get rid of these guys. Uh, and then that'll kind of mop up this position. But we need to get this unit out of here so we can free up these two units. Or at least free up one of them. Because it takes two units to get rid of one. Because I have to, I have to pin their facing with this unit. And then, yeah, there we go. Goodbye. All right, so these guys are trying to march across our front and join forces with these guys and and overwhelm this position. So we have got to get all these skirmishes in here. Cardano, get a move on, double quick, get in there. And uh, we'll start bringing some of our uh, units off. Now, our units are reduced because we split off so many skirmishers. So we're just gonna keep them by the fort and let the skirmishers in the fort do the bulk of the fighting uh, because skirmishers, do really good against line units they're in a protected position now they really should do good for a while there's no austrian artillery around to bombard this formation uh, to bombard this fort and set it afire and weaken its uh, uh its defensive abilities i don't see any austrian uh, oh well here comes some but we should be able to intercept these guys and make them turn around they're limbered they cannot unlimber or move past uh small units with small oh here's another one all right, so we may have to deal with some artillery fire. Damn it. I was hoping we wouldn't. Two, ba two Austrian batteries. All right. Gonna have to get this cavalry up here. Damn. All right, so we're gonna bring our guns up here and hopefully in the, in the middle here and start bombarding these, these uh, Austrians as they're coming forward here. So I wanna take this line unit and send them into the center here. That one unit ought to be good enough to cover that Austrian unit. All right, we've pushed these guys back. That's good. That means we can disengage this unit and maybe start, yeah. See, these guns are turning around because now they're coming in range of small arms. Good. All right, we take this unit, send them out over here. We can begin to build up a defense along this wood line right here. These units are now stopping to engage. We've halted their advance. That's actually good. There's nothing we could do to stop these guys from coming, but at least they're not able to link up with that other one. And we got a lot of skirmish units in here, man. We got a thousand men in this fort at this point. They ought to be able to do well. And I'm gonna get this unit out of here and keep them in reserve in case I need to defend flanks of the fort. We can send out skirmishers from that unit. These guys are pulling back again. These guys are probably moving off to re regroup over here. All right, so we can put these skirmishers out front. We could bring this unit over here. We can start to surround this position. Keep it safe. We can bring this unit over. So, all right, we're starting to stabilize the situation. It's a little frantic. We've got cavalry coming up. Get the supply wagon up here. The guns haven't even unlimbered yet, so I guess it doesn't matter, but we'll have to get that up, up there. All right, so... Uh, the Austrians are being smart here. They're doing what I did. Uh, they're trying to bring fire against multiple sides of the fort. We have a lot of skirmishers in there, though, man, a lot. They had full battalions. We had we have skirmisher units, so uh, we're in a better spot, I think. So we're kind of moving parallel to this unit here, just keeping ourselves between them and the garrison building that we're occupying. Never forget to double check the Austrian cavalry, make sure they're just sitting out there. Okay, still sitting out there, pretty and calm, not bothering anybody. We've got uh, 57 points off of our artillery. Good stuff. And I'm going to siphon off another squadron here because it's getting hairy over here. So uh, I want I want to have cavalry options on the left, the right, and the center. So I want three squadrons. Again, I don't really use them to charge. I just want to be able to force problem units into square whoever becomes a problem who's ever inflicting losses on me who's ever getting the better of me i want to be able to bring up a cavalry squadron and just say no you form square and that'll be the end of that 
So, uh, all right, let's move these units into these hedgerows or these wood line right here. It will offer something of a defensive terrain bonus. It will help to even the odds against these uh, Austrian line battalions that are obviously much bigger than our units. So in a firefight, it's largely just a number uh, about uh, who's got the most muskets. Uh, so the Austrians have the most muskets in terms of their battalions are bigger than mine. So we have to take every other advantage we can get. Terrain benefits, flanking benefits, skirmishers, whatever we can get to make it even. So now our battery is pulling back because these, as I said, guns cannot unlimber within range of small arms. So the same thing we just did to them, they're now doing to us. But uh, that's fine, we'll pull back. We'll pull these units over to stop this, and then we'll set up the guns right in here. The Austrians are moving in on this fort with a quickness. So, uh, things are developing in a hurry here. My initial plan worked out beautifully, but uh, there's no way I could have known that the Austrians actually had uh, you know, two more full regiments in reserve. Uh, and now I'm kind of scrambling to deal with them uh, in a not so planned out way. But we're just looking for, again, what I always do. I look for the unfair advantages. Look for the flanks, look for the skirmishers, look for the terrain benefits. Um, and just get get the situation under control and manipulate it to my advantage. It's always what I try to do. So uh, now our guns are now far enough away. This bat, this line is not facing them. I'm going to form them in line, and if they stay like this, I would almost be willing to wager that they are in range of grape shot of canister range uh, of these guns, and we'll be able to shoot them. So we've got two line two. Uh, battalions of French infantry moving off to engage these units here, uh, pin them in place, and we can start bombarding them with artillery. This unit here is still keeping that unit in check. One of our cavalry squadrons is getting pretty close. We'll be able to make use of them. Alright, so we're going to kick out some skirmishers, deploy them in the woods, and I think in here... Again, whatever unfair advantage we can get. Skirmishers, defensive terrain, distance management, all the stuff you guys have heard me talk about uh, in, 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 in previous videos. You know, so even, even with a scenario that I don't know, that I'm not familiar with at all, uh, as long as you know the fundamentals, you're able to instantly come up with plans for kind of any situation that you're presented with. So this is what I don't like. Right now we have a unit firing on the front and on the side. So the more sides that they're able to bring fire on, the faster they'll be able to shoot my units out of there. Now I have a lot more units in there than they did, and I'm protecting at least the right side. But I need to get the left side out. Oh, I heard grape shot. I heard my sound. There it is. This unit is indeed right in grape shot range. Our guns are letting rip. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. We're blowing a huge hole. Look at that. I love it. Let them have it. Get out of here. You're not going to stand. Yeah, they're done. You can't do that. You cannot stand in grape shot range like that. That was beautiful. That worked out perfectly. All right, so we got another cavalry squadron coming up on the right. We may be able to force some of these units into square. Uh... I'm just getting them up here quick. They're pretty fresh. So we have captured the right objective. It looks like it was worth at least a thousand points. Uh, we now have 1,800 points. I think, what did I say? We need 2,500. So, uh, oh, all right. Another unit has moved out here. So they've really, they're trying to move around and surround the fort here. But I got a cavalry squadron here. We can at the very least force this unit into square. And if we're really, really lucky, they'll, they'll, stand there and we'll be able to charge them but uh, another this unit looks like it's withdrawing we're now only dealing with that unit our skirmishers are doing good in here skirmishers inside a fort that's good stuff 
This unit broke and run thanks to the grape shot. We're really getting the situation under control here. All of this just broke. Look at that. They're gone. They're gone. They're sending out some skirmishers. We're bringing our cavalry up, though. That'll turn these skirmishers around. Force these guys into square. I know I sound like I'm rambling to you guys, but I'm almost like narrating what's going on in my head while I'm playing. Like, this is like all the wheels that are turning in my brain uh, while I'm while I'm playing. Uh, I'm thinking about all of these things. So here we go. We can get this unit out of here. Put this unit on their flank. Send a skirmish unit out in their front to pin them in place. Get rid of them. So the Austrians are pulled back now behind the second ridge line. All right, my cavalry is approaching, and these guys are still in line. So. Now, I don't normally like to use cavalry this way, but if you're going to stand there in line and give it, just give it to me, I'm going to take it. So, uh, here we go. They're standing there. We're charging. We're hitting them. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Watch the points. Watch this. Watch when we really close with them. Six. 34, 30. Yeah, watch this. It's gonna keep going. I'm just mashing the charge button. I'm just running this. I'm running these guys down. 40, 53. So yeah, we're just we're just ripping into this battalion now. You can't you can't stand there and like that in line and just uh, not form square when a cavalry unit is approaching you. This is what happens. So 67. We're just yeah, killing it, killing it. Keep going. And uh, I will just mash this charge to oblivion until literally my fatigue falls to winded and I can charge no more. 100, 106 points. We've killed 115 men. We're 130 men. Holy mackerel. All right, well, we're winded now, so that's the end of this charge, pretty much. Once they get down to winded, you can't just mash the charge button anymore. They're done. So we'll pull them back. Good job, boys. They destroyed that unit. And uh, we've cleared out our center rather nicely. Uh, and now I'm getting an idea. Now I'm getting an idea. So we have this pretty well in control right now. We've got four battalions lined up in this wood, wood line here. We're going to take care of these guys in a hurry. We've got these guys on their flank. We're going to send out some skirmishes to pin them in place. This is a cavalry squadron. And the weight of the Austrian guns is wide open. If we can really get rid of these guys so they can't move and form square and block us. And they're moving off right now. That's a cavalry charge waiting to happen. I see it now. I may not even see it in game at this point, but I see it now. All right, we're bringing up a, a third squadron. Now we can bring the supply wagon up. Our guns have fired some canister. They probably need to be resupplied soon. Get it up here. So yeah, the Austrians are really pulling back now. They have sent a skirmisher year forward. Uh, so yeah, good idea. Let's kick out some skirmishers to meet them. But I, uh, like I said, I never just go tit for tat. So we're gonna kick out a bunch of them. I want my engagements as unfair as possible. So we're not just gonna kick out one skirmisher unit. We're gonna kick out a whole bunch of them and, and, and get rid of these guys. Here we go, more skirmish units. Just put them out there. Just overwhelm these guys with firepower. These guys are advancing on a cavalry unit. Skirmishers cannot advance on cavalry. They will just turn around. Uh, they can't do anything against cavalry. They just got recalled. That was it. So these guys have pulled back, and now I see it. The way through to the guns is wide open. The squadron is super fresh. They're at full fatigue, high morale. They haven't taken hardly any losses. Uh, they, are, they are ready to go. So, yeah, we, we caved in everything over here with this cavalry charge. We can let them sit back and recuperate now. They're winded. They're going to take a while to... We've got two minutes and 14 seconds left on this objective. I think that's another thousand points. That should really put us over. What are we at? We're at, yeah, 
we're at 2159 already so we're going to be at like 3100 points when that objective falls so we're 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 golden we will clip a major victory at that point make sure uh here's our other squadron i just every once in a while i want to check and make sure that austrian cavalry is just sitting pretty out there not doing nothing we've racked up 65 points with our horse battery uh I wouldn't want to tangle with these guys now, as I've siphoned off about three squadrons, and it's a pretty even fight now. So uh, I'm happy if the Austrian cavalry just sits there for the whole rest of this uh, engagement here. And uh, well, that got a little hectic there for a while, didn't it? Those Austrian reserves really uh, kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't expect that. I thought that was all we had to face, clear that out, and we had it. Uh, but we have regained control of the situation. We are advancing on these guns with our squadron now. I'm going to kick out, an, again, just as unfair as possible. Here's another squadron. We're going to send them out on the flank of this unit, make sure we get rid of them. Just every unfair tactic I can use, we're going to do. So we'll send another 100-man group, put them on the flank of the skirmish unit. And uh, meanwhile, these guns, it's too late. Too late. They cannot limber up. They cannot get out of there. The cavalry is too close, and the cavalry moves faster. So even if though they're going to limber up and try, they're too... Nope. It's not going to happen. You cannot escape. These guns are mine. So, and this is no, this is no small potatoes here. Each one of these guns is worth 30 points. So 24, we're gonna get 54, 84. Every gun is another 30 points. That is not small potatoes. That man, that adds up. You know, it's gonna be like, I don't know, like a 174 points. That's, that's not small potatoes. Just for one cavalry charge. So I hear all the gunfire has died off now. So most likely now, 174 points just for that little 30-second cavalry charge. It, it's worth it. So the Austrians have really pulled back now away from us. I have a very secure position now. Uh, we do not need to push forward any further than we've already gotten. I'm just waiting to capture that last objective, which I think we've probably gotten by now. Uh, yes, the objective is gone. We can check our points. Where is, there he is, there's Albert. And yes, 3,450 points. We are way above what we need for a major victory. We have clinched this scenario beautifully. Uh, and uh, all that's left now is uh, to do a fridge run. I'll be right back, guys. Alright guys, I am back from my fridge run. Crack open a cold one here. And uh, we will finish out this video here. <clears throat> so we got about 10 minutes left in the scenario, I think. Hour and a half, we started at 4 a.m., so 5.30. And, um, yeah, we definitely clinched this. Uh, very nicely. By no means am I saying this is the most optimal way to beat the scenario. I would have to play the scenario a bunch of times to actually come up with the most optimum way. But for a first playthrough, I think this is pretty good.
So the Austrians have pulled back now out of the town almost completely. They have uh, ceded the fort in its entirety to us. Uh, they appear to no longer have the stomach to fight. Our cavalry has recovered. We're going to move them up. Uh, and the point of that is not that I want to charge again, but it will stop the infantry from advancing because when you when infantry comes within range of cavalry, they really have no choice but to form square. Uh, if they don't, you saw what happens. Um, so uh, that cavalry will basically stop the fort from being advanced upon again. Uh, and we can have a nice peaceful exit to this scenario. Just keep the Austrians contained outside of the town and uh, sit here and uh, wait for the timer to run out. In the meantime, we'll thicken up our line in the center. This unit here is still posing no issue. There's nothing they can do. They're, you, you know, th even though they're not, they were not heavily engaged. They're cut off from all their forces. If they turn to face that one unit I have watching them, I just send a bunch of others to reinforce them. There's nothing they can do. So I'm going to recall that skirmish unit and just send this little unit here that is uh, 167 men. I'm going to put them in the wood line and put them in skirmish formation. They'll cover a wide front. Uh, my cavalry uh, has arrived back from its glorious uh, charge against the enemy guns. And uh, here comes a uh, another uh, cavalry squadron that I'm sure I brought up here for some reason, but I guess whatever reason it was kind of evaporated before I... Uh, had before they had the chance to really get up here, so we really only needed those two cavalry squadrons. So the enemy infantry is milling around back there, but uh, by and large, I think we have uh, taken the wind out of the Austrian sails. I'm sure glad we didn't have to deal with that Hessian brigade uh, from episode one that had the uh, the level eight Imperial Guard level troop quality. That wouldn't have been fun. If those two battalions that I charged at the beginning, those two Austrian columns had been Hessians and I had done that, they probably would have beaten my entire brigade. I know that sounds outrageous, but... You really don't ever want to mess with level 8 troop quality. It, 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 no matter how well you think you have the odds stacked against you, just don't do it. <laughs> literally, like level 8 troop quality, you're, you're a god. You are literally a god incarnate in this game. So yeah, luckily it was not them that we had to deal with. Just uh, kind of run-of-the-mill Austrian troops here. I'm just checking casualties here, just making sure that these guns aren't putting a pounding on these troops over here in the woods here. The woods are pretty good defensive terrain. I don't really think they're getting hit that badly. Here's our other cavalry squadron. I'll just kind of bring them up in the center. And uh, we'll just, one last time here, make sure the Austrian cavalry is just sitting out there. Uh, they kind of really didn't play much of a part in the engagement. They were kind of wasted, really. I wonder if the scenario writer was just expecting me to go after them. Uh, but when I saw that they were withdrawing and just setting up a formation, 
my first thought my first thoughts are always what can I accomplish defensively rather than offensively because defense is better in this game it always is so while this was a largely offensive scenario I completely checked the Austrian cavalry not by engaging them but but just setting up a a, a wall in front of them and not aggroing them uh, so uh, the scenario author may have just expected me to go at them with my own cavalry and, and, and try and actually attack them. Um, but I always think from a defensive mindset first. What can I accomplish defensively and get the job done without doing something offensively? You know, you only want to be offensive in this game if you absolutely have to. Uh, if that's what it takes to accomplish the mission. Uh, and even then I have my own uh, strategies that you know let me concentrate large forces against smaller forces so that's that's I'm always trying to hedge everything in my favor that's what I'm always trying to do whether uh, defensively or offensively um, but when you come in with a defensive mindset um, defensive formations are largely static so it's just not as much to have to watch lar not as much to control at once you know, so I set up that cavalry screen, and yeah, I go back, I go back there and check out, and make sure everything is status quo now and again. But by and large, I really didn't have to do anything with them; they just sat there. You know, so it was just one less thing I had to worry about. So we have 3,577 points here, uh, clinched a major victory by uh, over a thousand points. But uh, this was a fun scenario. Uh, it got hectic there uh, it, after we um, cleared out the first line of Austrian defense because I obviously they the I couldn't see the Austrian reserves because they were actually really far back. So uh, I had to kind of scramble there for a few minutes to get them under control. Uh, but now you can see there's really nothing they can do because uh, there's kind of just one ca one cavalry squadron will hold this all in check because they cannot approach without forming square and if they were to do that approach form square so that they would shoot at the cavalry I would take one of these skirmish units out of the fort because it's no longer an objective and uh, just put them in front of the cavalry so I always have an answer whatever you can do I have an answer to it because I've seen just about every combination of combined arms that can be imposed in this game because I mean hell a lot of it I invented so these skirmishers are moving out but uh, you know, they just got recalled they can't do anything and uh, we are winding down here this cavalry is not going to make it to where I assign them so we'll just put them over here and uh we're winding down here. A couple of seconds left. All right, here we go, guys. 3,577 points. Got ourselves our major victory. And uh, we... Took 321 casualties, and we inflicted 1,293, almost 1,300 casualties on the enemy. So a really lopsided battle. Again, I know a lot about this game. I invented all the best tactics. So um, even playing blind, it's it's for me, it's not surprising to see numbers like this on a, on a first playthrough. I just, at this point... Uh, in the game, I just understand it so well that um, as soon as a situation is presented to me, I already have 10 ideas about how to deal with it. Uh, so, but this was a, by no means does that mean this scenario is a joke. This was a fun scenario. I just have a lot of experience playing uh, the game. Uh, so, you know, I can take pretty much any scenario and, and, and kind of make it look easy just because I really have a lot of really great grasp on the, both the game's mechanics it's it's engaged distances it's combined arms mechanics and gimmicks and and so forth uh, uh so it, it just lets me do things that you know are not taken into account 
when a scenario is written. By no means is this a badly written scenario. It, it, it was actually a lot of fun. It was a very well written scenario. Any normal player would find the scenario probably pretty challenging. Um, you know, I've been playing this game for oh, damn near five years now. Uh, you know, I got the game the, the day the, came, the thing came out, and I spent years, a lot of time, just really researching how it worked and experimenting and, 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 and learning all I could about how the game works. Uh, uh, so uh, that's why I tend to even blind like this. I can make it look pretty easy. Um, but this is, this is a good scenario. I mean, honestly, all the Lace Henger scenarios have been pretty, have been pretty good. Uh, there's nothing that I've seen so far that I would call out and say, um, this, you know, this is a badly written scenario. Like say the French full Waterloo scenario is, uh, as I talked about in that, it's a very, very badly written scenario because you can actually win the scenario without actually engaging the enemy, which is just about as bad as you can get as far as scenario writing goes. Um, but no, all the, the Lace and Jurors mod is, is fantastic. I've been having a great time with it. Uh, I still have the full battles uh, uh, for La Cifel to look forward to. Those are big, uh, long battles. I think they're like five hours each. Uh, so uh, I know I don't uh, upload videos as often as I used to back when I was doing my tutorials and, and the main series and so forth, the numbered episodes. Um, but... Uh, it's because I you know, I play a lot of other stuff now too. I don't just play Scourge of War, um, but uh, Scourge of War is still my baby. It's still my favorite game of all time. Um, it's still my favorite war game, um, and uh, yeah, Norbsoft is still my favorite game company. So uh, I look forward to uh, continuing uh, the Lace and Jaws mod as well as uh, see what Mitra and his. Uh, band of accomplished modders uh, may yet have in store for us and what Norbsoft has in store for us in the future. Uh, I know they're, you know, they're not posting too much right now. I think they're developing a new game, a new engine. Uh, so you're not seeing or hearing a lot from Norbsoft right now, but I think that's a good sign. I think that means they're busy working on new stuff, on a new game, and I can't wait to see what they come up with because Norbsoft is the one company of all gaming companies that have never missed the mark with me. Uh, they've never released a game I didn't enjoy. Going all the way back to Scourge of War, Gettysburg, Antietam, Chancellorsville, Pipe Creek, blah, 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 Waterloo, Lace and Jaws, everything they've ever released, I've loved. Um, so, you know, very few companies, you know, have like a 100% track record uh, with me. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what they have in store. Uh, in the future, in the near future, I will be doing the full battles for uh, La Cifel, for the Le Sajor mod. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I will see you guys next time. Take it easy, fellas.